Greetings from Castle Goring, from Mickey, Aurora and from me. Well, we are busy preparing for Christmas and I would imagine so are you. Unless, of course, you're preparing for Hanukkah or something else. Happy holidays, as they say in the United States. <laughs> Well, I come from a world where everybody says Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Muslims, Jews, Christians, Buddhists, everybody says Merry Christmas and Happy New Year because they, they all celebrate the fact that we Christians have something to celebrate. So I just make that point for what it's worth with some of the rigidities that have crept into modern life. So distasteful. Now, hopefully we're going to have a little fun and we're going to start off on a very light note, personal. And then we are going to go on to something a little bit more meaty, shall we say. Chris Creed wants to know, who is pictured in the large painting behind you and just curious? It is Haman, the Agagite, imploring Queen Esther in the presence of Mordecai and the Emperor Xerxes, to whom she was married, the Persian Emperor Xerxes, one of the great emperors of all time, to spare his life because he had embarked upon, it's in the Book of Esther, in the Old Testament, he had embarked upon a way of destroying a Mordecai. Mordecai was Jewish, as was Queen Esther, hence the book of Esther in the Old Testament. And Haman had built a gibbet, really, for Mordecai to hang from and he ended up hanging from it. Oh, I think nowadays they call it karma. Oh dear, oh dear. Anyway, that's what the picture is about. And while I'm on personal subjects, more than one person has asked me recently what foundation I use and how I put it on. I use a Rimmel or matte foundation. Actually, I think it's just ordinary foundation. I don't remember which foundation it is. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, but it's a Rimmel foundation. It's the one with either the blue or the red lid it's long lasting and i just put a put a bit in the palm of my hand and then go poops 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 bits dots and then blend it in as simple as that and then i use rimmel translucent powder over it to set it so hopefully that answers the question and we will now plunge in with some really rather meatier stuff. Deborah Lester says, this is a little off topic, but I'm wondering if someone can clear up my confusion. Archie and Lily are referred to as Prince and Princess of Sussex on the royal website, even though their father is Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex. Prince is the hereditary title. Duke is a title conferred by the Queen. Why wouldn't they be 
hereditary prince and princess of the realm rather than Sussex. I'm a confused American. Simple. They're not the children of the monarch. Only the children of the monarch are princes and princesses of the realm. They are the grandchildren of the monarch and therefore they are styled not according to the realm but according to the county of which the title, ducal title, originates. I hope that answers that question. Simple. And isn't it wonderful? Don't we have a lot to celebrate today? Because I don't know if you're aware of it, but Meghan has announced that she is possibly, of course, it's announced sneakily through her PR people, that they are thinking of moving from Montecito to LA because she's so popular in Hollywood <laughs> that she needs to be near of the action. <laughs> I tell you, you couldn't make any of this up, could you? Oh, dear sweet Megsy baby, so popular that she has been given various awards recently, most loathed, most unpopular, uh, lied about the Netflix, Netflix lied about it, and wait for it, as I have said all along, if you remember, before Harry's book was even out for sale, I pointed out that it was going to be a loss maker for Penguin Random House. It's all over the media. It's a loss maker for Penguin Random House. It was obvious to me because it's my world that it had to be a loss maker. Poor Penguin Random House. Well, anyway. Willie W says, at this point, do we think that the Prince and Princess of Wales care about Harry and Meghan and their childish antics? I mean, look at them. Everything they, that is Harry and Meghan, do fails. They can't be taken seriously. I would love to know how much the Prince and Princess of Wales really are worry, worry. <laughs> about these two in Cali. I'll tell you, I know how much they worry about Harry and Meghan in California. Not at all. My understanding is Harry and Meghan's names are virtually never mentioned. They are not alluded to in the vaguest way. They are treated as if an incontinent, as if they are the product of an incontinent, embarrassing old relation who has just dumped a load in the drawing room and everybody is trying to pretend that it doesn't stink and that they're going to make sure that they just look away a little bit so nobody realizes oh well everybody realizes actually that it's they're trying to keep their dignity as they fail to acknowledge it and don't step into it mm. they're evidently supremely unworried. That doesn't mean that at some point something won't or might not be done. The two things are actually not that connected. Something might well be done. 
not because they are particularly worried, but because it might be deemed appropriate to draw a line on the certain matters. You notice Harry and Meghan have not denied one of the accusations that Amid Scabies didn't write about and that ghastly Saskia Peters put in the Dutch edition. Oh, sorry, it emerges he did write about it, didn't he? Oh, yes. And she translated it, but I thought he said he didn't write it. He did say that. So, they're not worried. They're not at all worried. They can see very clearly, I am told, that as long as they keep to the business at hand, continue doing what they're doing as exemplarily as they are doing it, they are getting the recognition for their work that they have earned and deserve. And they don't need to stoop to the level of tit for tat. Was it not Napoleon who said, when an enemy is destroying himself, don't interfere? And believe me, many a person in the Prince William camp views Harry now and Meghan especially, as an adversary. So, Michelle Lewis says, Lady C, I have no interest in Tyler Perry. Innocent, guilty, who cares? But karma has a way. Megalaya made a slur against the royal family on the Dopra. <laughs> interview i've got to read it again on the dopra interview <laughs> and the mainstream media covered it as though it were true happily dragging them through the mud that stir slur is still sticking and they have done nothing to correct it tyler perry believed them he had the temerity to insult a family of whom he has no knowledge on the word of a known liar. Well, Mr. Perry, let's see if you like, if like it. It's just a vague accusation that does not mention him by name. Everybody is just guessing, but he is in the crosshairs without proof. Mm. Michelle Lewis, of course, you're absolutely right. Uh, except, I think, as I was reading it, I noticed that you did make an error. Now, what was it? Oh, uh, oh dear. <laughs> what was it? If I don't deal with things as I see them, I forget. Sorry, it's... The slur is still sticking and they have done nothing to correct it. Well, that's not so. Harry told Tom Bradby that Meghan had, and obviously he, had never accused the royal family of racism. Do you remember how taken aback by that brass-necked, bare-faced lie Tom Bradby was. But of course, if he had said, excuse me, you're lying, the interview would never have aired. So he, but his face was worth a thousand words. Well, maybe it isn't Tyler Perry. Maybe it is. I've been receiving comments that it could be the person who he could the 
actor could have been hinting at was Will Smith. I have no idea. It's not my world. And quite frankly, I don't want to know. <laughs> to put it mildly, very unsavory. I don't really like oh, unsavory matters of that kind. Let me put it that way. Um, however, Tyler Perry will now know what it's like to be in the frame and uh, people leap to conclusions on little or no evidence whatsoever and can and often do a light upon the wrong culprit. I'll tell you what I was told by a Hollywood contact, that if this matter dies a death, whether it was Tyler Perry or someone else, if this matter does not proceed further, because evidently Christian, whatever his name was, the actor, uh, according to some reports, waited until the statute of limitations was over to out him. Maybe he's doing it for the greater good. And if this is the shot across the bow and then there's going to be a full-scale battle, we will know that it was really to expose somebody who was behaving in an untoward manner and abusing his privilege, shall we say, and his position. And of course, it's always unseemly when people in positions of power tempt and try to take advantage of those who are beneath them financially and in a worldly sense. Tempting them, well, I mean, when I was modeling, it was par for the course that photographers, even talk show hosts, I remember there was a talk show host called Joe Franklin, who I was introduced to, and he told me he'd love to have me on his show but I needed to be nice to him. And I was very mischievous. I said, how? And he stuck out his tongue. And I said, I don't need to be on your show. <laughs> so, the point I'm trying to make is it's the casting couch and temptation and very successful men, it usually was, although I gather it was sometimes women as well, would try to take advantage of hopefuls. And I actually think it's a good thing that that is made unlawful. However, Let's not be blind to the fact that there are also shakedown merchants who jump on the bandwagon and will happily send somebody to prison with whom they colluded and cooperated to advance their career. As long as there's a pot of gold at the end of the action. So let's not be blind to that. Uh, one needs to always keep a sense of proportion. And that's equally wrong, in my view. In fact, 
I would go further and say it's even more wrong because somebody who may have been morally dubious and was being untoward enough to play upon the ambitions and hopes cynically and amorally of someone else that person could still say no when that person says yes and feels badly about it that should be between them and their god or their priest or their therapist and they should accept responsibility for their error and is that worth somebody else going to prison for several years? Well, some people would say yes, other people would say no. I would say the punishment should always fit the crime. But the fact of the matter is, what I have been told in Hollywood is if this does not proceed any further, it could well be that the person who was behaving badly has quickly entered into a settlement with his accuser that could well be for millions even tens of millions and if we hear nothing more that it was Tyler Perry, Will Smith, Bob Hope, Bing Crosby or whoever else. I mean, I'm using the names of people who aren't alive for obvious reasons, just to make the point that it could be somebody so obscure and outlandish as to be <laughs> almost unbelievable. Uh, that will say an awful lot. So let us see. Now, as for Harry and Meghan, several people have made the point to me that Harry and Meghan ex use, 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 I was going to say exploit the friendship with Tyler Perry fully. Oh, uh, and Tyler Perry has a plane. Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up, but it has to be on a private plane. And, you know, Jessica Mulroney, or Mulrooney, however the name is pronounced, had served her purpose. There was nothing else to suck from her. Tyler Perry has a lot of substance worth sucking. So let's see what happens there as well. Is this story going to die a death? Because then we will never know with any certainty who the accused was. Hmm. Interesting, no? The wheels within wheels. Cornelia says, I'm sure you're right. I wouldn't put anything past her. I've always believed evil exists, but it's quite, it is quite startling to see it so blatantly employed in the public eye and th thinks no one notices. Cornelia, I've read out your comment because it's absolutely true. Evil does exist. And we may all have different definitions of evil, but there is such a thing as evil. And to just be didactic about it. Evil is the opposite of good. 
and anybody who's behaving badly and who is behaving in a destructive way deliberately there is a school of thought that that could be fairly called evil and you're absolutely right because the performance that has been played out in public i mean i don't know what you think but i'm gonna put myself in the shoes of a woman of color who marries into the royal family and who is told that somebody was concerned as to how dark a child that she was pr producing was going to be. Well, that right there tells you that whoever was having the conversation thought she was pregnant, if indeed the claims as to when the conversation took place are accurate. I'm being very measured here as to what I say. Now, let's presume that Meghan Markle was speaking the truth to Oprah and some one person which has magically grown into two and there are even three names bandied around. I don't know. Megan seems to be very adept at having names expand in a way that earning money doesn't, but we'll get to that in another minute or so. Suppose somebody did say it. Suppose there had been somebody who was rather concerned. Was it not disloyal and traitorous and really nasty to reveal that information? I mean, every family has secrets. Every family has embarrassments. Every family has prejudices. Every family has downsides that if you ferret around long and hard enough, you will be able to discover that they exist. Which decent person exposes the failings of a member of her family? I would respectfully submit no decent person would do that under any circumstances whatsoever except if she were going to be defending herself which Megan was not defending herself Megan was justifying departing from the most eminent family on earth to hawk her wares like a common hustler in Hollywood. It's inexcusable. Is it evil? It's certainly disloyal. It's certainly reprehensible. It certainly shows that she cannot be trusted. Is it evil? If you think it is, nobody can deprive you of your right of thinking that it is. Because if that is your definition of evil and another person has a different definition of evil, it doesn't exclude your right to regard that as evil. And the blatant exhibition of failings 
or as you would put it, evil, that the world has been treated to is shameless in the grossest possible way. I think that even if every word Megan said had been true, she still had no right whatsoever to have exposed the people the way she did and gone public with it. I think she is beyond belief. You know, her PR people have been saying that 2024 is going to be her year of redemption. My prediction is, and I'm not a fortune teller, but I'm going to make a prediction without being a fortune teller, just going off what is in the pipeline. It will be her redemption only if she manages to be humble, be honest, be truthful, and be decent. But she's going to need to be all of those things, and she's also need, going to need to pull a rail, not a rabbit, but a sable out of that hat. I say, if you deserve it, you shouldn't bawl and squawk when you get it. They have shown us what Anus Horribilis is all about. Maureen Ball says, I remember the time of Mexit when the press told us how the Queen was blindsided by the Sussex's own fast pace of action. The Queen wanted to allow much more time for discussion. The Sussexes didn't want that. But Meghan ran with Archie and the dog to Canada for Christmas 2019, where she was joined by Harry. Great care was taken by Meghan to get Archie out of the country. Departure was swift, but it was an escape, not any kind of forced removal. Absolutely correct, Maureen Ball. Absolutely correct. Well, Harry can feel that they were forced out of the country on a freedom flight, remember? He took a freedom flight out of the country. My goodness. He obviously doesn't know the meaning of the word forced. And I suspect that's part of the problem because Harry also doesn't know the meaning of the word duped. Diane Delello says, Dear Lady C, can you explain what you know or surmise is the status of the despicable duo's financial state? From one source I hear that they are millionaires of the highest order, and from others that they are on the verge of financial ruin. What is your informed opinion? Thank you for considering my question. Also, a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. Thank you so much to you too as well. Um, Harry was left a certain amount of money. It's a very nice amount of money to poor people. It's a very comfortable amount of money to people of means. It is chicken feed to very rich people. It is beyond chicken feed to billionaires. Harry wouldn't be able to buy one tenth of Bezos's yacht 
it would consume every penny he had or will have. Megan, she never owned a house. Megan's supposed great fortune was no great fortune. She was earning nice money, and I'm not disparaging her accomplishments. They were valid accomplishments. They simply were not number one accomplishments. They were number 11 accomplishments. I would th think that, I mean, first of all, I'll tell you how money works. If you have real money, you don't even live on the interest. You live on the interest of the interest and even the interest of the interest of the interest. So your capital keeps on growing. If you don't have real money, but you have a little money, you may be able to take that little bit of capital and make it work for you to increase the capital. But at the same time, you're having to use capital to live off. So it's not a stable or a certain position to be in because if there is a downturn or there is a change of circumstance, all of a sudden you discover that you are short. So that's really Harry and Meghan's position. Now, Harry has done pretty well off the book Spare, but I have emphasized repeatedly that the phantasmagoric figures that they have been banding around are absolute fiction. Certainly, they have enough liquid or had enough liquidity for to fund Archiewell to the tune of $13 million. Or well, let me rephrase that, for Archiewell to be funded to the tune of $13 million. The way their spending and their finances and their cadging and their begging bowl behavior and their uh, pretenses uh, are what they lead me to believe is that they basically have been playing with between 20 and 25 million dollars. Now, that might seem a lot of money to the average person. And it certainly, if you offered me $25 million, I wouldn't say no. But I'll tell you, that's not a lot of money when you're dealing with rich people. And it's not a great deal of money if you have to fund a lifestyle of any significance. And if you have tastes such as Megan's, with everything has to be from a known designer, uh, and she has to go for walks with Cartier bracelets and Dolce and & Gabbana clothes. And aside from it being so tacky, I can't tell you, uh, no civilized or well-bred person would be behaving the way she does. But putting that aside, it's a waste of money. And people from moneyed backgrounds usually understand, unless they are incredibly dumb and incredibly 
protected, shall we say. They know how money works and they know that you don't eat into capital. You try to increase your capital. Well, Megan has been trying to increase their capital, but she has been failing miserably because she tried it on the route of betrayal and she people haven't appreciated that. I've said it all along. The average person is sufficiently family orientated to understand that all families have issues and you do not trash your family. Washing dirty linen in public is one of the most unsafe things you can do. But she has done it and she did it in the hope of making money for herself and increasing her capital. Well, it hasn't really increased the capital. And I'll tell you, if she writes a tell-all book, of course, it's going to be telling all sorts of lies, but that's something else. Again, that would be her version of the truth. Uh, everybody will be able to pick what the real truth is from amongst the lies. Uh, she's not going to be making a vast sum of money either. Harry, I suspect, has most likely made about six or eight I have to look at the figures to be sure, but I let's say he's made eight million dollars from spare. He doesn't get eight million dollars in his pocket, and eight million dollars is chicken feed to a couple that said that they had a $130 million deal with Netflix and a $30 million deal with Spotify, which of course they didn't. As it happens, by the time the Spotify nonsense was through, if she got $2 million, she got a lot in her pocket. So I hope that answers the question, unless they are extremely careful, there is, their lifestyle is unsustainable as it stands. So let's wait and see what happens. Silver Crow Song says, good morning, Lady C. Could you clarify the whole Mark Morgan situation for me? I thought I read in Spare and Elsewhere that she had a date first with Morgan and then with Harry and clearly stayed with Harry. I am probably missing a piece that fits the puzzle outside of maybe the first date with Morgan not going well. And how dare he not fall in love, in lust. <laughs> Sorry, with Megsy baby. No, 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 my dear. It wasn't anything like that. Pears has been very happily married to Celia Walden and was married to her for about, well, for several years. I, of course, I don't remember exactly when this happened. I think it was 2016. And he's been married to her from 2010, if I remember correctly. But anyway, he's been married to her for a long time and they are very firmly and happily married. So there is no possibility that it was hanky-panky date. It was that Pears is a presenter and he's always open to the possibilities of meeting people and developing friendships with them or relationships with them, maybe working relationships that are cordial, that ultimately will become friendships, but they're positive working relationships. And that's what that was all about. It was never anything hanky-panky. Wish Ananda says, would you please explain what Prince Philip meant when he told Harry, we step out with actresses, we don't marry them. Is it due to him knowing that they'll do 
what sorry what they'll do to get a part of value of the casting couch or lack of class in relation to royal status i'd like insight well until the 20th century really the late 19th century actresses were little better than tarts they were uh, for instance, Charles II's mistress was who was an actress, Nell Gwynne. She was an actress. She produced the Duke of St. Albans. And <laughs> when she was mobbed and they, she said <laughs> to the mob, no, 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 I'm not Lady Castlemaine. I'm not the Catholic bore, shall we say, since this is YouTube. I am the Protestant bore, shall we say. But bore begins with two other letters, the first of which is W. <laughs> and that's what actresses were basically regarded as being a, a, the demimonde you know they were not acceptable they in society they were not you didn't have them to dinner you didn't have them for weekends in the 20th century this changed it started to change in the 19th century with mrs patrick campbell and it, there were other people like Ellen Terry, uh, Sarah Bernhardt, uh, Theda Barra. And by the 20th century, once the 20th century got properly on the way, they were figures of glamour, but still not regarded as marriage material and if somebody married one you sort of grinned and you would bear it but you didn't really like it there are reasons for this first of all actresses are usually dragged up by their ambition and they will usually do what it takes to succeed. That calls their character and their moral fiber into question. That's the first thing. The second thing is people of true substance are, they don't act. You are a lady. You don't act as if you are a lady you are a lady and being a lady you will know what to do and what not to do and ladies will cuss and rant and rave and scream and carry on and create scenes when it is appropriate but they will not do it when it is not appropriate and there are certain things ladies and may i say that ladies don't have necessarily to be upper class they can be very well brought up ordinary women true ladies we're really referring to sterling virtues noble demeanor a noble demeanor is not necessarily related to noble rank but people of noble rank are expected to know how to behave and to know it to such an extent that if you need to remonstrate with them they're not perplexed as to why you're remonstrating with them well Megan has shown the world that she has no concept of what nobility is and that she cannot be remonstrated with. And 
Prince Philip understood that, I mean, that Meghan was a two-bit hustler. That's what he understood she was. That's what she was seen as. And she has shown herself to be a two-bit hustler. Well, he wasn't going to say to Harry, oh, uh, you know, grandson, you can't marry this two-bit hustler. So he put it another way. Uh, he was being diplomatic and Harry wasn't having a bit of it. But gentlemen traditionally have been allowed to do whatever they want in the privacy of their own homes, flats, clubs, and certain establishments. Let me put it that way. But they don't take practices that will be commented upon, if you get what I mean, in, into the drawing room. It's just not done. Harry was bringing somebody into the drawing room that really nobody wanted even in the kitchen. And that's the fact. So I hope that explains it. Oh, and may I say, as for the casting couch bit, there have been duchesses who were very busy. <laughs> but nobody wants somebody to be busy on at all, but definitely not before the first few children have been produced. It's always helpful to know who is actually succeeding to what title, castle, palace, estate, company, etc. So, but yes, also, it, it wasn't only, because funnily enough, in upper class circles, people are a lot more relaxed about that sort of behavior than they are in other classes. But what they are not ever relaxed about is bad behavior out of place. So no, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a little bit dodgy in that respect, as long as you're going to clean up your act. But what is unforgivable is if you do not know how to behave in the drawing room and in life generally. So I hope that explains it. And the last question is, Dear Lady C, you were speaking about Harry and Meghan's foundation slash charity and the lack of interest made on the amounts that they claim is in their account. You said that means the money is not in the account and maybe in a non-interest bearing vehicle. I was being sarcastic there. I have thought about this for a while. May I suggest that instead of the aforementioned, would you think that this money has been siphoned off into a Swiss bank account or something similar? My own reading of it, Benjamin Hayko, is that it is the entirety of the funds they have available to have the facade or uh, invented that they have invented you know big in entrepreneurs fabulous philanthropists and it's all chicken feed stuff and i think that they need the money to be circulating it's it's like irrigating a field that's my take on it they need to have the money circulating. 
uh, like a field that's irrigated and it goes from one slot to another and maybe in a circular motion and comes back to where it started out. That's my impression of what's going on. I could be wrong, but it's to me the most likely explanation as to why the money shows up just when the accounts are being prepared and it's in the bank at that time. But then miraculously, it doesn't earn interest. And it doesn't earn interest because it's needed elsewhere. It's, you know, it's security of a different sort. And on that note, I say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. Please keep the questions and comments coming in because I need to know what you would like us to be speaking about. Okay? Thank you so much. And since I'm not going to see all of you until after Christmas, to those of you whom I don't see, have a very, very Merry Christmas. Okay? Thank you so much. God bless. And if you have truly enjoyed this, would you care to like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell, and God speed. <laughs>